Peace family. The end of a year. Is it? The end of a calendar year, for sure. But this ain't the end of the year, because after this is not the beginning of the year. I'm talking to you on December 31st. You're probably watching this after the New Year's already begun. And by now, like most people, you're already beating yourself up about not doing what you said you'd do on your New Year's resolutions, which is ridiculous. Let me give you some new New Year's resolutions. First, just resolve to a gradual process that don't have to bloom and spring up instantaneously. That ain't the way nature works. Do you see how this look back here? This dormant. Do you know how long this lasts? It don't change January 1st. That's a fiscal new year, calendar new year. There's a whole lot of European history involved. A bunch of Ro Roman generals and people that fought and made fools of each other. Specifically, um, related to us and our ancestors who, you know, we live off of nature and we go off of the nat natural cycles and we know about the spring solstice and the equinox and things like that. So when the sun do its little Watusi for its little moment that it do it for, and then we know, okay, things about to bloom. And that's around March 22nd or so. And so between March 22nd and April 1st, people throughout many parts of the inhabited ancient world would celebrate our new year. So it's a way of saying now all the seeds that we planted, you know, at the end of the fall, going into the winter when things get cold and you know things ain't gonna bloom. I mean, low key, we've been living through a long winter already. Remember when we were taught, like, you know, about the, it's going to be a cold winter. You know, you have to prepare for a cold winter. Well, this pandemic and this lockdown that's occurred all over the planet has been the cold winter, hasn't it? So for those of us that have already been through our own hells and homelessness and uh, loneliness and grieving and, and whatever you might have been through before the pandemic, you were prepared, were you? You were, like, prepared. Like, you were differently built, you know? You, you, you weren't maybe prepared to see other people acting like you because you know it is panicky energy out here that's what pandemic break down to them panic and uh delta and omicron if you take a piece of paper you should write more move the letters around it's media control it just make me wonder what happened to the flu i remember the flu let's Shout out to the flu. We remember when the flu was a thing and the flu used to make people sick. And if you was weak or elderly, man, the flu would be dangerous. So we wouldn't go around elderly people when we know we're sick. Especially in the winter when it's a lot of germs out here. Just being around the cold don't make you get sick, but it lowers your immune response. And then a bunch of other people out here sniffling, sneezing, not wiping, not cleaning, just putting their snot on the doorknob and the keypad and now you touching it. Then you go into the testing center, standing in line to find out if you, what you sick with. You just had the regular cold, but by the time you take the test, oh yeah, you got the other stuff. I mean, it don't take that long for you to get it because it's been on the test. They had some that the test was, it was on the test. Not to mention all the false positives they had. A lot of this is related to the economy. But it's not related to the economy as it benefits the general population. So those are the people that care about the general population, care about our families and our communities. We understood that, you know, when you start destroying the ability of small business to operate, you only allow monopolies to exist in their place. And there's now being a world made where there's only monopolies and people that work for monopolies, and then there's going to be the people that don't. The people that work for the monopolies, you're going to have all kinds of monitors and systems, which we're already used to it. We went from punching a time card to having digital systems, to now they're going to know when your heat signature is in the building, and they're going to know when you're sweating. That's the, going to be their way of measuring work. That's Microsoft Patent 666 if you want to look it up. Um, and they bought up a bunch of housing. They even bought up all around the Georgia Dome. They bought up all them houses. I'm talking about Microsoft did. What's that for? Employee housing. You know, this is all coming. They're going to make you scared of going outside and being in the air. They're going to tell you this is all toxic. And you and your babies might know better, but what they're going to do, they're going to shame you to make you feel like you got to go along to get along. Well, let's, let's just be okay with being April Fool's then. Because that's how we got that name. See, we were the ones that celebrated our new year on April 1st, when the new year is real, when it's actually spring. And guess what the Romans and others did? They said, you're April fools. We're gonna mock you, we're gonna shame you, and maybe you'll stop keeping up this silly tradition that we're actually, we actually know is the real thing. Maybe if we can get you to go along with our schedule, our clock, our calendar, our timelines, our deadlines, then you'll be functioning like a dead body thinking you're living because until you start living for yourself and for your family, you kind of are dead. 
you kind of are enslaved and it feel like that it do feel like zombie like to keep on reporting someplace where it don't mean nothing to you it don't really build up your self-esteem your sense of purpose um and and to keep doing that to yourself especially as they start testing you and then might let's say you don't get you know do the thing that everybody else is doing or now you're gonna get shamed I mean, those of us that stopped eating pork, we already know this. Those that stopped eating meat back in the day before it became popular, we know what this felt like. Those of us that got knowledge of self and changed our names, we know what this felt like. And those of you that have been through uh, grief and, and, and losing a child or a loved one, you know, that in a way that most people don't really experience, you, you know a lot more about what people are feeling on the planet right now because they're grieving. They're grieving a deep loss and they don't even really know specifically what they've lost. They've lost their familiar life. And for, for most people, losing familiarity and dealing with change is challenging. But I want you to remember that our ancestors, man, we are indigenous bloodlines. Like everyone we come from that had hard and, and passionate commitment to their planet and to seeing the greater goodness, seeing us thrive. The ones from us, the people before us, that made it to where we could be strong. They wanted us to be strong. They did what they had to do. They even sacrificed. They might have gave up their emotions, their feelings, their whatever, they own dreams and their desires. Maybe they had to work and be like a dead body or a zombie so that you could discover freedom. And, and don't dishonor them. Don't shame them. Don't mock them. You know, honor them. They did it for you so you could do this. And then you honor them by doing something for them. You build something in their honor. Because everybody that gave their time and gave their life, man, you ain't got to grieve for them. They don't want your salty tears. They don't want you to cry for them. They want you to grow. They want you to take care of those that they love. They want you to take care of those that they love. Otherwise, then maybe that might be why you get haunted. You're not taking care of the ones that you know that this one you're saying you love them will love the ones they love. Do the work they love. Support the missions and the visions that they really dedicated their life and live into. And then you'll find peace. Um, way more than you'll find if you're just striving to be accepted by the rest of the world. Those of us that want to be accepted, we're going to be forced into false compliance. And that's what's really going to make you a fool. When you just go along to get along and now... You know, you can't homeschool your children when you got to report to this type of work where they're telling you that it's toxic because how are you even going to be capable when you got to clock in these hours almost mindlessly? They, that's not going to be something you get trusted to do, especially if you're raising the children and not want to do what you're doing. No, that's why you trust your children to the state, so the state can raise the children how they want the children to turn out as good, productive citizens. reason I got these books sitting up here, and I know you, you know, I ain't been on lying in a long time and those of you that know my life story you know what i'm coming back from and if you see a smile in my face it's authentic because i've really been putting myself back together if you watch me on social media <laughs> you know i wasn't all the way together for a long time and that's natural so have patience with yourself as you become a healer make sure you have patience and i, I got these books laid out to remind you that literacy and poet is ma it matters and uh, well, I'm like, wow, well, I sound illiterate saying it, right? But it's like that don't matter. You don't got to be the perfect enunciator. You don't got to be the best reader. You don't got to be the best researcher. What you got to be the best at is being better, getting better, growing. And so these books are just meant to help people grow. Like this, like the early side. This is the side that people want to skip ahead to science itself and get deep. You know, my science itself page on Instagram is the most popular page I got on, Insta got on Instagram. But Hood Health got a page. Um, when the World Was Black has a page down here tucked away right that's the history book this is from two horizons press the sister company the supreme design publishing because we started reaching mainstream audiences with cookbooks and stuff like that this is hood health related that's our vegetarian cookbook but this right here was about mental health because i didn't have it all figured out even then this is like 2012 how to get people to the promised land of being emotionally whole but I knew there was tried and tested classics that had been working for my uncles and brothers and, and, and elders and pioneers that came before me, like as a man thinking. So when I discovered the author as a man thinking, then I found out a book that actually dealing with going from poverty to power. Oh yeah, I found a way to republish that. And then we republished a lot of classics. We even got a hold of some of Du Bois' unknown work and some of Frederick Douglass' unknown work, David Walker's revolutionary appeal, like great historical work that's perfect for homeschooling. This is social studies. This is reading comprehension. This is write a book report. This is make, show your child how to blog now. Show your child how to write. Show your child how to make a TikTok. Three things I learned about David Walker. And then they'll see, wow, I got some, re I got some views. I got some posts. Yes, there's actually young people that's interested in that now. Yeah, because we did our work. We got, we got adults like me reading. I'm 41 now, you know. My eldest is 24 now. Little one is 12 now, you know. We made it. We, 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 we build a sustainable life. 
we we working from home, we teaching at home. I'm hiring teachers. You can look on ourbestschools.com and look up soil and you'll find your way. If you're really interested, you'll find your way to find out how to teach for us. And that's all just an expansion of just the models that we talk about. Peace, brother, how you doing? You know, this is the model of how we started with these books, like just talking about how to edify and educate yourself. And then when people brought this home, they realized their children wanted to learn and their mamas and aunties and uncles, and there was less arguments and less debates. And you ain't got to tell your uncle he dumb for eating pork, but he, he, just, he just read this and he educate himself. Now he not fighting with an ego. He dealing with knowledge. He going in his own head and thinking. It make a new type of person. So I'm glad we did that because now those leaders that have raised themselves up by becoming healthy, getting that knowledge of self, developing health, wealth, and sustainable, I mean health, natural health, sustainable wealth, and knowledge of self. And knowledge of self is the foundation for the natural health and sustainable wealth. And now that we have those many people that like yourself might be somebody that's, I've been studying, I've been, I've been using the work, I've been doing it. Well, now we're gonna take it to the next level. I wanna showcase you, I wanna interview you. I wanna come out to see you. Let me come to your barbershop. Let me come to your community center. Let me see what you've been doing with them young folks. If you got the young, then you ain't gotta worry about what it takes to get me to be a part of it. I'm already a part of it, ain't I? I'm gonna get more a part of it. And that way we all grow together. You know, as I like to say, the only thing greater than you and I is us. So this righteous family, we're gonna prevail. And we're going to be teaching on the next level now through our children, through our families. Because when you show your children how to participate in your home-based business by creating social media content that's interesting and engaging, you gotta have them knowing something so they might have to read them how to hustle and win at age 15 and learn some games so they don't get fooled by the world and scammed and suck it. But then when they teach, it's gonna be dynamic. And so then when they promote and market, it's gonna be engaging. So then how you gonna lose? And then as an adult, what kind of an adult are they gonna be? Just imagine. It's beautiful things coming, man. So we gonna live in the hereafter. The hereafter is who, what, and how we are after. All this is no longer the same. You already seeing it changing. You see the writing on the wall. I'm just looking for everybody that's literate, you know? Because once you see the writing on the wall, then you get a little bit into the research to see that there's those of us with knowledge of self that have studied these things. And the tradition that I have is way older and way bigger than me. It's not my teachings. It's a teaching that I've just been blessed to be able to pass on and get it to as many people as possible. I think that's why I was chosen to do this, so that I could reach as many people as possible. And at this point, ain't nothing left to do, right? So I love y'all and I love you for being part of this world, right? If you're looking for me, you can find me at supremeunderstanding.com or supremedesignonline.com. And support black bookstores. You can go to bestblackbooks.com and look at a list of all the black bookstores in the country that we know of. If you know of some, please add some. If you started one, please let us know. And if you want to start a book club in your city or sell books in your city, find us online at Supreme Design Online and reach out to us. All right? Love y'all. Peace.